So in the last couple of videos, we've been working on DickMaker. Um, we've had uh, we had a look at how it uh, is organized and uh, how it works and things like that. Uh, in this video, we will be Mm -hmm. we'll be trying to find out the answer to just one question it's about how to do a clean architecture in uh, postgres heavy applications so first i'll uh, maybe i'll look at clean architectures okay uh, Um, clean architecture images yeah so this is something this is clean architecture where at the very center there are only entities and then there are logic around it and then db comes at the very outside so uh, let me just look at uh, go clean architecture There's a nice, uh, I was searching for something earlier and I found, uh, a nice blog post, uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, this, yeah, this, so uh, you want something like your models need to be simple and uh, okay now this one I do clean architecture Yeah, this is on. Uh, an updated version. So you have in clean architecture, what happens is um, according to Uncle Bob's clean architecture, you have uh, one set of files which are just pure entity classes so for example in this is book entity user so look at uh, this for example user it's just id email password first name last name and then books and uh, there's a function which we give all these returns a user mm. So this uh, particular entity layer is very, how do you say, pure. It's like, it's like simple go. There's nothing extra. They are just tracts and functions. Okay. Uh, now there is a logic layer. So after in this layer, use case layer contains application this business rules. So use case layer things like. Uh, borrow a book to an user uh, you get questions like uh, is quantity correct uh, is the book available uh, can the user take that much book all of that mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, at the outside there are uh, layers about uh, layers that communicate with the database etc so you would also have some converters between the entity uh, so the user object here for example where is user object 
the user object at the very beginning this might not directly go into the database as it is in the database it might have some different structure and that is covered in the adapter layer and uh, uh, Oh, or is it uh, yeah so uh, this layer also talks to different uh, domains and uh, different layers and gets things out of it so this is an api layer for the web api which has in itself handler middleware bus everything like that so uh -huh, this is a good example so earlier there was this user struct this is just pure go and then that needs to be transformed into a json for web responses so that is a different layer altogether so this user and this user although they are referring to the same they are in completely different layers this is in the core entity layer and this is in the outside layer uh, now this is something uh so this is so if you look at the images again, again, uh, there's an entity at the center, business logic around it, and uh, the other things are outside that. Okay. Now, 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 uh, now the problem is. When it comes to dick maker for example dick maker uses the tokenization feature of uh, postgres so in other words um, if you look at uh, query so the search functionality for example uses the 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 feature or does it not use oh sorry for that mm the it's not a search per se now let me open even if you are inserting a word for example um i'll just open the read so essentially there is a concept of tokenization and uh, the entire uh, and search so and uh, it's built entirely on postgres see generic entity relation structure or dictionary data and postgres area is just two tables and um, use a built-in tokenized supported by postgres so it uses the postgres db's capabilities all of that so this is essentially a database uh, driven uh, architecture uh, so i don't know if this is the same as data driven the thing is if you want to say use uh, elastic search instead of postgres for this uh, dip make application then uh, the kind of uh, rewrites we would want to do would be really complicated because uh, this kind of puts uh, uh, postgres at the center of everything and uh, it goes in that uh, so if i were to write about uh, how this one is goes like uh, postgres uh, or database 
and then um, there is a layer of uh, logic or adapter and then there is a layer of um, network something like this uh, entities are just uh, uh, converted from network to data okay so the logic is uh, mostly in searching and uh, so the logic is kind of uh, logic is also here so the logic is spread across data layer and uh, application layer whereas in a clean architecture you would have something like uh, entities at the center logic around it and then uh, adapters and then uh, 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 network or d database all of this would come at the very end so this is what i mean by database driven or data driven uh, this thing now the question is uh, how do we do a data driven uh, no, how, how so if we are using so much of postgres features uh, does it even make sense to so i came up with this vertical slice architecture um, no i mean i came across uh, this one is about uh, uh, so instead of doing this it says take a slice for each feature put all of that in one in section one file or what one folder or whatever and uh, then uh, what happens is you would have uh, um, okay that example is not here but essentially you would be able to uh, take a db uh, for for one particular feature you can have one database for another feature you can have another database and things like that so uh, vertical slice architecture is somewhat like uh, microservices i think uh, i mean uh, need not be but nevertheless uh, you do something like that order is one order details one approved uh, all of that is one now the question i have is is it possible to have um, to use database heavy uh, features in uh, clean architecture that's our question so uh, if postgres is going to do so one obvious way to do is uh, see here is a clean architecture and here is logic in our logic if we want to use a database heavy feature we can say uh, instead of mixing up database here and here we can use database features as a library here as library I mean it's not like logic me you cannot use uh, libraries at all so you would uh, so imagine if you want to tokenize a word so a word comes in through the network it goes to adapter uh, it goes into the logic and it's in the logic that it would get tokenized so while tokenizing it would call a database it need not even be this database it would be some database it would call a function to tokenize that function could be run by the database and then uh, it could create an entity and then when for persisting this again it would go back all the way and in database it would be persisted so essentially database was called initially for tokenizing not for uh, not as a database but just as a library and uh, that layer doesn't care about i mean it this doesn't store anything this is just a functional usage of uh, database features so that is one obvious way of doing it but i am thinking if are, are there any other ways of doing it character uh, database heavy 
so if there is a database heavy so this question is actually really interesting so if you look at this uh, uh, i'm looking up uh, some so they, this person has come across a thing with lots of sql queries and uh, they're saying thinking um, we'll have a user case and we'll have uh, uh, stored sql functions and uh, then that would derive so essentially database would be where all the logic is written and then that comes but then when this person came across uh, uncle bob's clean architecture the problem is database independent application should be completely database independent now how does um how do you have uh, database independence if you are storing things in a um, database if you're storing logic in database that's a problem right unfortunately this one doesn't have a lot of good answers uh, java So, this kind of uh, uh, or applied to a simple android application like a photo viewer where the photo entity has about zero business rules and the use case that deals with them is nearly non-existent uh the point to make separate representation of the photo starts to vanish i even get the feeling of the photo itself is the data transfer so uh you want to display photo rename with three times besides uh the point actually is to move in uh so question is clean architecture making use of database functions why is this so difficult But, uh, uh, making use of database features in clean market that work to include things like the ui database Ah, uh -huh. okay. Someone says suboptimal use of your database. Decouple the logic database being struck. Um, uh, okay, let's read this. I think this might give us an answer. Being struck was being struck was a lot of additional class of getting data and adopting a set of framework. Only item. Uh, depending on how you take data, you might make a suboptimal use of your database. Single function change like required okay so let's look at that 
Robert suggests uh, to build all the business logic before on choosing what kind of simply writing code in some person with this kind of data on this ad, somebody will you can delay this show which kind of writing code you could make it very hard to find database actually has what you need. By defining entities and relationships before even choosing what kind of database you are going to use, probably making suboptimal use of the database you end up using. The kind of data you would want to store together and the way you would want to represent relationships can be totally different for relation database. Correct. This is the fundamental problem. Uh, So database independence is the issue and uh, PostgreSQL features. Let's look at that. Uh, So this is a problem, right? Essentially, we are using database. So if we need database independence, we shouldn't be using Postgres features. I think uh, uh, database independence and database features uh, How do we use database features? Without uh, using database features, without um, losing portability. Aha. This is a good one. Vlad writes about Hibernate. Uh, how to use database specific without sacrificing? I like that. Although can I say portrayed by subtracting non-common features. Now you have to improvise to provide adapter for every specific framework. Are, so assume you need to build a report that has from both Oracle and MySQL. You can abstract the domain methods and expose my interface and have multiple database specific implementation. Yeah, that is one way of doing it. Can you portal to without sacrificing? So I think what will happen here is uh, we can't have so we really need to decide if uh, tokenization is a logic thing or is it a database thing. Like imagine if uh, logic didn't know anything about tokenization. Okay. Logic doesn't know anything about tokenization. Logic only talks about, logic says search. And uh, it's the database which uses tokens. Would that be a good? Uh, I think that would be the solution. So essentially, you have entities. Uh, let's say a word. Uh, uh, let's say entity. Uh, language word. Uh, ID, G, ID, whatever and uh, we have um, 
yeah even this id is a problem because id is generated by the database anyhow that's not worry about that so we have logic which says search and passes word okay uh search takes word and then database can do tokenization here so if logic doesn't know anything about tokens then it's a possibility so now the question is does our uh, uh what if logic needs to know about tokens what if uh, uh what if okay if tokenization okay so essentially database features uh, i think the first solution i came up with would be one solution another solution could be what else can we there was a nice article uh somewhere microsoft uh, database independence independence this one mr nikhil's that's microsoft uh this is person uh okay Very enjoyable writing in some types of Java. Smart person, smart. Uh, now uh, we need to. Let's see if there's a different uh, Microsoft and uh, Blade architecture. Problem in working package by feature. Business layer, service layer, persistent layer. okay so i think uh, for this particular application okay we will uh, will possibly look at uh, the implications of this in a different video but i think um this point about using this database feature in the logic layer will have to be done as so okay let's look at this then um auto generated id and uh, clean architecture this is a serial id given by the database right aha uh -huh. this one says don't use uh, ids in your domain entities that's what it says okay it's a smart uh, public void ship order id customer id how often do you see
okay so this is a good uh, point uh, if ids are essentially persistent logic implementation details they have no relation to your domain so we could use a composite parameter instead of single column key but the meaning of the code would remain the same in addition encapsulation is broken Solution is you don't need IDs, all you need is define equal to numbers in the base. Okay. So we shouldn't have a persistent things shouldn't be in the entity. So ID would never be come, coming here. ID would not come here. GUID might come because this is something we generate. ID from the database won't come here. So I think the answer then is if token is generated only by the database and is used only by the database, then it should also not come here. But if it is used by logic, it should come here and logic can use database features directly not while persisting to do the token thing okay that's so uh, it's probably going to be is it going to be a performance issue if anyhow postgres has to do a tokenize yeah, I think there's no performance issue in doing logic going to database only as a library and then again going to database for a persistence. So, okay so that's uh that's it i think we have an answer so we'll end this video thank you